Hi, so this next project is going to be on a couple of kits that I built. Um, these were both from Zeppelin Design Labs. Um, I ordered these over the internet. I think they were around $60 each plus shipping. Um, these are both music related kits. Uh, one of them is a theremin that uses uh, sonar sensors. Uh, the other is a mini synthesizer. So the idea for this came about uh, from Nuts and Volts magazine. So I do read Nuts and Volts, gives me lots of uh, project ideas. Um, sometimes you'll notice interesting kits or test equipment or stuff in some of the product pages and that's what happened here. So they had something here on this Altura Theremin MIDI controller kit. You know, I looked at it and it's got some digital parts, some sonar sensors and I'm thinking, well this seems like a really cool twist on a classic theremin. Uh, so I ordered it. Okay, the Macchiato MIDI synth. And the Altura Theremin. I am going to build these two things. Starting with the Theremin, I think. Look, so we have an acrylic uh, laser cut case, printed circuit boards, a couple uh, sonar uh, transducers, and a bag of discrete components, and a 9 volt battery holder. And, ah, uh, it looks like front panel decals, an instruction decal, and a Zeppelin decal. Uh, thank you, that's nice. Thank you for buying the product. This would be a plan for building your own case if you wanted to make one out of... Uh, Maybe cardboard or something like that. We bought the acrylic case. Okay, let's get started building this. So I printed out the assembly manual, all uh, 50 pages of it. This is one of the most comprehensive assembly guides I've received with a kit in uh, modern times. Uh, I mean, I'd compare it to maybe the old Heath kit manuals that were very comprehensive. Um, Actually goes into theory of operation. It may even be better than the old heat kit manuals. It's been so long. Um, but anyway, it's very impressive. Uh, this is black and white. The instructions are actually in color. Um, but I printed them on a black and white printer. So you can see there's pictures of all the components. Um, circuit board showing you what to do. On and on. the display in, hooking up the sonar sensors, uh, making a cabinet out of cardstock. We actually have the acrylic cabinet kit, so there's instructions for that. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, build the thing. Okay, so I finished assembly. Everything was pretty much easy and straightforward. I followed the instructions, uh, pretty much everything that was called for. Uh, the only change I made is that the kit only included a socket for the uh, CPU. Um, I had some other sockets, so I socketed the other chips uh, as well. I always like to socket all my chips. So here it is, all put together. Took me, I'd say, about an hour to install the battery. Battery's installed. And then it says to uh, set articulation. Turn all knobs fully counterclockwise. We've done that. They're all fully counterclockwise. Press red power button. It says 211120 and then C1. And it says, should say software version number, number that's multiple of 15 and the character C1. So it's doing that. Move your hand near left sensor. And it says it's kind of forming a circle. Is the right sensor shouldn't do anything. 
Um, turn blue articulation trim pot until display reads 45. Okay, blue articulation trim pot. That's 45. So the cabinet is a bunch of pieces of laser cut acrylic. Um, typical of laser cut acrylic, we have to peel the backings off. Um, there's also a little stack of magnets. I'm building one of these, make sure not to lose those. Um, so I'm going to peel all this stuff off and then start gluing these pieces together. Okay, so I finished gluing the case together. I used a uh, acrylic glue. Um, I think it turned out alright, not perfect. I haven't really glued a case like this together before. Um, so one of the key things I think you want to be careful of is not get glue on the face or if you do get glue get it off before it really hardens up. So some of it I'm gonna have to scrape a little bit at to get rid of the glue. Um, there is a top piece that's gonna go um, like so. Um, I have to glue some magnets to that. It'll be held on by magnets. And then there's a decal, which you have to cut out with an X-Acto knife, uh, that will go on here, like so. And that'll be the uh, top panel. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and start mounting parts into it. Okay, so I finished mounting the theremin in its case. So you can see the two sonar sensors are mounted there um, on the back. It's power switch. Um, power input, um, MIDI out. Now it came with lots of decals. I wasn't quite sure where they all went, but I thought this scale number and function one seemed useful, so I stuck it on the front. Um, decal on the top panel is kind of obvious where it needs to go. The top panel is held in by these magnets. You super glue them in. Total of four magnets, and then four matching magnets here. Um, assuming I put them the right way up, this should just clunk right into place. Well, there. It's kind of held in. Hold it on there super solid, but holds it on good enough, maybe. So then, power on. And there's the pitch bend. You can see my hand. Pitch bend. Doesn't light up anything for this, but get sound out of it. Okay, so I brought out my Roland SC55 uh, MIDI module, a speaker for it. I'm going to hook it up to the um, Altura Theremin. So let's power up the Roland. Power it up, switch on the theremin. There's a uh, MIDI cable that goes between the two. Um, so right now the default um, the default instrument is piano. It's piano one, that's just what came up on channel one on the uh, on the Roland. So if we move our hand out here, it's playing notes. And then the other hand is the pitch band, uh, which you probably can't hear too well on the piano just because of the way a piano uh, sound is, but let's try some other instruments. Uh, harpsichord. Oh yeah, glockenspiel. Let's go all the way out to something like a flute. Flute. 
The flute will produce a nice continuous sound. So there you can hear the pitch bend. So as you can probably tell, I'm not a musician. I just like things that make uh, noise. Uh, so I have no idea how to actually play any kind of music with this thing. Uh, but it's fun to play with. There's lots of controls on here, so if we adjust the octave near, uh, we can kind of set the range of what our right hand is going to be doing. And we can set the octave far, we can go way out on the far end. See, it's kind of hard sometimes to figure out where the sweet spot is out here. There. It's very low, very high pitch. Yeah, so these two are controlling what our what our right hand is doing. Let me reset them back to center. Um, and then we've got over here there's a bunch of different functions it can do. So let's try going out to five, which is portamento. And that's supposed to control like kind of how quickly it goes from one note to the next. Yes. Let's see, did I do it right? Is it set to five? Oh yeah, I have to set the data. So there's a data near and a data far that go with um, this one as well. So let's set the data near down, the data far is way up so yeah it does all kinds of stuff you know it's it's nice that it, it is a MIDI device um, so it works you know with any MIDI player like my SC55 I could have put it on the MT32 and got it to work as well. So I was going to have my daughter play with it, I was thinking, but I think she's too young at this point. She doesn't have the discipline to hold her hands in the right place because there is a relatively narrow range. So right there, and then we're back out again. So you, you really have to have your hand where the sonar sensor uh, can pick it up. And the same with this one. So next up, let's build a mini synthesizer to go with our mini theremin. So this is the Macchiato Mini Synth by Zeppelin Design Labs. Um, ordered it with case. This is a styrene case. Black plastic. Here's all the parts for the synthesizer. PC board. Bunch of parts. It's a speaker, a bunch of potentiometers. Shouldn't be too much work to do this. Let's give it a shot. So as with the theremin, I printed out the assembly manual and it's, you know, another very nice uh, manual. Um, if I'd chosen to print it in color, it would be in color, but I printed it in my black and white printer uh, to save toner. Um, very thorough, you know, how it works, what you'll need, list of the parts. You know, and step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, you know, these are just great, wonderful instructions for a kit. Um, you know, there's tips as you go through it. Interesting way to mount a capacitor. Um, yeah, so this is... I imagine this one's going to be a piece of cake. You know, it also, also covers making a case out of uh, cardstock. And then uh, also covers uh, making the uh, styrene case uh, that I bought. So let's go ahead and build this thing. So you'll notice the uh, PC board for the synthesizer does come with the CPU 
in the crystal already mounted. Um, those are surface mount devices. They probably assumed it was beyond the skill of most uh, kit builders to solder that fine pitch surface mount package. So they put it on there for us. Um, that's cool. I mean, I'm glad I don't have to bother with soldering it. On the other hand, you know, it would have been kind of nice to have a through hole one, but um, I'm not going to complain a whole lot. Looks like they probably did need all of those pins on that uh, surface mount package. Okay, so I finished assembling the circuit board. It all went pretty much according to what the instruction manual said. Um, I did socket the two ICs, so the optocoupler over here, the audio amp over here. I socketed those just because I like to socket ICs. Um, other than that, everything went fine. We turn it on. The light is on. I set all these potentiometers kind of the middle position. It'll make some noise now. Raise the volume a bit. It's got like a lot of reverb type effect in it, but I assume one of these potentiometers um, will control that. Let's see, octave. So we take rate. See, so yeah, it makes some. It makes some really interesting, uh, interesting tones. But next up, let's build the case. So the case uh, comes as a bunch of plastic pieces. I'm told that this is uh, styrene, which is uh, different than acrylic, which the other case was made out of. So this is kind of a darker uh, material. This is kind of uh, a bit more matte, whereas the other one was glossier. Um, and I'm going to glue all these pieces together according to the instructions. Okay, the Macchiato is now fully assembled, mounted in its case. It's now, okay, so the Macchiato uh, synthesizer is now finished and mounted in its case. I've completed everything, glued it all together. I did reinforce this uh, edge here on the case a little bit because it seemed a little bit fragile. There was some leftover plastic stock that I glued in there. Um, one thing um, to notice if you are building yourself one of these, uh, the case comes with all these little magnets uh, that are used to hold the top and bottom pieces together. Uh, make sure when you open the bag containing the case that you immediately do something with those magnets because if you drop them on the floor, they're very small. I spent like 20 minutes running around the floor with a piece of metal trying to find those magnets. Uh, eventually they did go clunk up against the metal and I found them, but I had never found them in the carpet otherwise. Um, careful with your magnets. So, magnetic case is nice. This just snaps into place. Let's... Uh, Hook up an amplifier, power it up. So the uh, instruction said all knobs all the way to the left except octave and cutoff, which we want all the way to the right. So there's octave. Okay, let's see if it makes noise. Maybe we don't want volume all the way to the left. There. Yeah, it seems like release, if you turn it all the way to the left, is a little bit off. So let's... So let's uh, mess with this shape control. What does that do? The rate.
So yeah, it's cool. You can play around with these uh, settings and do all kinds of interesting stuff to it. Because this is a MIDI synthesizer, we can hook it up to any other MIDI player and it will play on the synthesizer. So over here we have my Raspberry Pi MIDI player, it's got hundreds of thousands of songs in it. Demoed this in a previous video, um, you can kind of select which song you want with this control. Um, then I hooked it up via MIDI cable uh, to the Macchiato. Um, I don't have the Macchiato turned on yet because as soon as I do it's going to start uh, playing music and drown my voice out. Um, but let's let's turn it on and see what it sounds like. So we can change some of these controls. Let's turn the volume down a little. Now you'll notice we're only hearing kind of a background track, that's because this song here probably has many different tracks and this is only playing uh, part one of the track. If we had a bunch of different synthesizers, um, we could have each one play a different uh, instrument in the song. Uh, there's not that many songs that only have one part, but I'm just kind of illustrating the flexibility of MIDI here. Uh, so we can, of course, hook up our Altura Theremin to our Macchiato synthesizer. So let's plug them in together, power each one on. Now let me hook up my audio out to the nice loud speaker. So yeah, that produces some very interesting stuff. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.